Hey, looking at implicit differentiation, which is a, an application of the chain rule, and the purpose of implicit differentiation is to find the derivative or find dy dx for equations where you cannot solve explicitly for y or where solving for y would be prohibitively difficult. So these are some examples where you either cannot or you don't want to solve for y. Uh, and, and if you look at these, even the bottom one uh, can be a little bit problematic. Uh, first two are a little bit more obvious because you have a y to the first and a y squared. And isolating a y in those situations is really tricky. And you might be thinking that the bottom one is pretty easy to solve for y, and it is. However, when you take the square root to finish solving for y, you would have to remember there is a positive and a negative square root. And so you can solve for y, but... You're creating two equations, and it's sometimes easier just to have the one at the beginning. So those are cases where you would use implicit differentiation. And to introduce you to the brains behind implicit differentiation, I'm actually going to use an implicit differentiation type thought process on a couple of problems. It would otherwise be easy. So if you look at this very first one, on the surface, it's really just a nice clean power rule. However, I'm going to apply the chain rule to this, this function. And when I find the derivative, um, the derivative of y would be the derivative of y dy with respect to x. So dy dx. And when I go over here and I do the derivative of 4x cubed, I'm going to bring on the 3. So 3 times 4 is 12. I'm actually going to use the chain rule. And so that'll be 12. I'm going to leave the x alone, subtract 1. But then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of the inside is 1. The derivative of x is 1. However, I'm going to write that 1 in a very unique way. I'm going to write it this way. Similarly to how I said the derivative of y was the derivative of y with respect to x, well, the derivative of x would be the derivative of x with respect to x. And so I'm going to write the derivative of the inside that way. And then I'll repeat the process for 7x squared. So 2 times 7 is 14. I'm going to leave the x alone. That's what the chain rule says to do. We leave the inside. That'll be to the first power. And then the derivative of the inside, which is 1, I'm just going to write the 1 in a unique way. It's the derivative of x with respect to x. And in both of those cases, dx dx is just 1. So we really don't need to write those. That's just equal to 1. That's equal to 1. And so when you substitute those ones in for dx dx, it ends up being just 12x squared plus 14x. Um, and there would be your derivative using an implicit differentiation thought process. Going to do the same thing on number um, on the second one right here. Uh, now I could move the x squared over and make it 8 minus x squared, but for the purpose of making a point, I'm leaving the x squared there. And I will again apply the chain rule to x squared. So the derivative of x squared is 2. We'll leave the x alone to the first power. Then we would multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is the derivative of x with respect to x. Then I'll move on. The derivative of y is the derivative of y with respect to x. And then the derivative of 8, we have to do the derivative of both sides of the equation. That would be 0. Now I'm trying to solve for dy. I'm trying to find dy dx. Um, dx dx is equal to 1, so I really don't need that. And if I'm going to solve for dy dx, I'm just going to move the 2x over. And I end up with dy dx. The derivative of y with respect to x would just be negative 2x. So those are a couple of kind of weird previews of how implicit differentiation works. Maybe a little bit too weird, but let's look at some where implicit is actually needed. And then you can see why I wanted to show you the dx dx thing. So let's look at this one. I have x squared plus y squared equals 9. And you could solve that for y, but it would, again, again that's the one that would create two equations because you would have the positive and the negative square root. So instead of trying to isolate y first, I'm going to go through and we're just going to differentiate the whole equation. I'm going to find the derivative of the whole thing from left to right and just remember to do both sides of the equation. So the derivative of x squared would be 2x times the derivative of the inside, the derivative of x would be dx dx. And this is the last time I'm going to write dx dx. I'm getting tired of that thing. Then I move on to y squared. 
which I'm going to chain rule that, bring the 2 down. I'm going to leave the y to the first. But then the derivative of y, the derivative of y is the derivative of y with respect to x. When I do the derivative of the inside, I get dy dx. And then on the right side of the equation, the derivative of 9 would be 0. And then I solve for dy dx. Now, dx dx is 1. That's not needed. So I'm going to get rid of the dx dx. But dy dx, that does not reduce to 1. That is a very important piece of this derivative. We're going to solve for the dy dx. And we will start by moving the 2x over. Then we will divide by the 2y. Divide by the 2y. And then we will end up with dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x. And the 2's cancel. That would reduce to just negative x over y. And more often than not, if you are doing implicit differentiation, you will have x's and y's in your final derivative. And there is your first problem. So you do the derivatives using the chain rule. And the derivative of y, you have to remember, is dy dx. And then the problem becomes algebra. You have to solve for the dy dx. So let's look at another one. So here we have uh, pretty ugly stuff. We have a bunch of y's, a couple of different y's. And that means it's going to be really difficult to solve on the front end. And so now I'm going to differentiate this just from left to right. I'm not going to try to clean it up. The derivative of x cubed with respect to x. No, that's just a normal 3x squared. Technically, there's a dx dx in there, but I'm tired of writing dx dx. Moving on. The derivative of 4y, well, if that were a 4x, the derivative of 4x would just be 4. So the derivative of 4y is 4. However, that was a y term. So I have to remember to multiply by the derivative of y, which is a dy dx. Anything that's not an x, you have to do give it what I call the implicit treatment. I have to multiply by dy dx. Then I move on. Derivative of y squared. Well, just the normal derivative, your power rule says the derivative of y squared is 2y. But I then have to chain rule that. I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside piece. And the derivative of y is dy dx. So we have to remember that we have to tack on that dy dx. And then the final end is the derivative of 8. That is 0. And so there you are through with the calculus. From here on, it's algebra. We have to solve for dy dx. And anytime you're solving for an unknown, what you want to do is move everything that does not have that unknown in it to the other side of the equation. So I will start by moving the 3x squared over. So that's going to leave me with 4 dy dx minus 2y dy dx is equal to negative 3x squared. At this point, everything on the left side of the equation has that dy dx in it. So I'm going to factor out the dy dx, that will leave me with 4 minus 2y. And then I will finish this by dividing by the 4 minus 2y. dy dx is equal to negative 3x squared over 4 minus 2y. And there is your derivative. We have our derivative of y with respect to x right there. So that is how implicit works. It's very heavy on the algebra. The calculus is pretty quick. We actually finished the calculus right here in that first step. And from there on, it was algebra to isolate the dy dx. Hey, let's try this one. Again, multiple y's. Too hard to solve for y on the front end. So we're going to jump straight into the calculus. We're going to differentiate this from left to right. And we are doing the derivative with respect to x which means anything that is not an x, when you differentiate it, you have to give it the implicit treatment. Anything that is an x, we just do the normal derivative. So x squared, we'll just do a normal derivative. That's 2x. Now, xy, if you look at that, you have to be careful. xy is a product. We are multiplying x times y. So we have to do the product rule. We have to do the product rule for that xy. So I'm going to, in parentheses, do my product rule, which is the derivative of my first term. Well, the derivative of x is just 1. And I'll leave the second one alone. Now plus, I'll leave the x alone. Now the derivative of y would be 1, but y is not an x, so I have to give it the implicit treatment, dy dx. 
So there's my product rule. Then I move on. The derivative of y squared is 2y, but that's not an x. So I have to tack on the dy dx. And don't forget to differentiate the right side. A lot of times people focus so much on that ugly left side that they forget to differentiate the constant or whatever there is on the right side. Derivative of 12 is zero. And now we have algebra. Um, I'm going to clean it up ever so slightly. One times y and x dy dx. Just make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Except my writing is garbage. This is embarrassing. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to leave my dy dx terms here. I'm going to take everything without a dy dx and move it over. So I'm going to take that 2x and that positive y, move it over. So x dy dx plus 2y dy dx is going to equal negative 2x minus y. We will factor the dy dx out of those remaining terms gives you x plus 2y equals negative 2x minus y. And then when you divide by the dy dx, when I divide, I'm sorry, not by the, by the x plus 2y, we have our derivative of y with respect to x is equal to negative 2x minus y over x plus 2y. And there is your derivative of y with respect to x. So there we go. Let's see, I think I have three more and they're gonna move up in difficulty. So let's throw some trig in here. Everybody hates trig, I don't know why. Y'all just have some anxiety when it comes to trig. Uh, okay, I don't really wanna bother trying to solve for y here. That's gonna create something horrendously ugly. So let's go straight to the derivative. I'm gonna differentiate the whole equation with respect to x. And when I do that, I have a chain rule right here. I have sine of y squared. So I start on the outside, derivative of sine is cosine. We will leave the y squared where it is, but then we have to multiply by the derivative of y squared, which is 2y dy dx. Anything that is not your independent variable, and your independent variable is defined right here. It's the variable on bottom, so anything that is not an x has to be treated implicitly. So I have to multiply the 2y by a dy dx, Moving over, the rest of this is going to be kind of nice because these are x's and I'm doing the derivative with respect to x. So the derivative of cosine x is just negative sine x and the derivative of x would just be 1. So equals 1. And now we have to solve for dy dx. This first piece right here, this is all one big piece. I'm going to leave that where it is because it has that dy attached to it. I'm going to move the sine x to the other side. And so I'll have cosine y squared times 2y times dy dx. And I chose to put, throw an extra parenthesis in there, parentheses, um, just to separate the dy dx because I know I'm going to solve for that eventually. I kind of want it isolated. And that makes it look a little bit more isolated from the rest of that. So I'm solving for dy dx. We will finish by dividing by the cosine y squared and 2y. So divide by cosine y squared and 2y. And we finally have our derivative of 1 plus sine x all divided by cosine y squared times 2y. There is your dy dx. Okay, number five, tangent y equals tangent xy. I'm going to start, just differentiate the whole thing from left to right. I do not want to attempt to solve that for y in the front end. So on the left side, the derivative of y with respect to x is simply the derivative of y with respect to x. So dy dx is equal to, and on the right side, we have a chain. I have tangent with stuff on the inside. The derivative of tangent is secant squared leave the inside alone. We do not touch the inside. Then we multiply by the derivative of xy, which that again is a product. So now I'm going to do the product rule here. And so the derivative of x would be 1, leave the y alone. Plus, now I'm going to leave the x alone and the derivative of the y term is dy dx. 
And now I have to solve for dy dx. And this one is quite ugly because I have dy dx's on both sides of the equation this time, which means I've got to start by trying to figure out how I'm going to get them on the same side. And the best way to do that, and I, I suppose there are other options, but the best way to do that would be to take this secant squared, because this secant squared is being multiplied by all this, I'm going to distribute it through this set of parentheses or brackets as I have them drawn. And so I will have dy dx is equal to y times secant squared x y. plus then x secant squared xy times dy dx. And I just shifted things around, but all that's in there. So now I need to get my dy dx's on the same side of the equation. I'm gonna take this guy, move it over to the left side, and we are almost done. The algebra on these implicit problems you will find is much more challenging than the calculus. Whoops, I didn't do that right. Uh, that's gonna be dy dx minus x times secant squared xy times dy dx equals all this stuff. We'll factor out the dy dx and then divide by the remaining terms. There we go. So one more, one more, um, and here I'm actually asking you to use the derivative. So we're not just finding the derivative, we're going to use it to find the equation of a line tangent, which means we need a point and a slope. We already have the point, and to get the slope, I will need to find the derivative of this equation. So I'm going to differentiate this guy from left to right, and notice I have a negative 2xy, that is a product, and it is safest to ignore the negative 2 and do negative 2 times and product rule the xy. So when I do this derivative, the derivative of x squared is going to be 2x. Ignore the negative 2, and I will product rule x times y. So the derivative of x is 1 times y plus x times the derivative of y. Then the derivative of y squared is 2y, but I have to tack on the dy dx. There's your implicit treatment because y is not my independent variable. And the derivative of 4 is 0. And here's where this problem is actually going to be a lot nicer than the other problems. Because everything you have left to do is algebra. We are through with the calculus. We need to find dy dx and we need to find the slope. So we are going to solve for dy dx and plug in the point because both of those are algebra operations. It does not matter the order in which you do it. So if you are given a point to plug in to an implicit differentiation problem, it's actually a gift because I can plug in the point as soon as I am through with the derivative. As soon as I finish the derivative, I am now going to plug in my, three, my point three one. And when you plug in that point three one, we get a very nice equation. So that's going to be two times three minus two times one times one plus x is three. We don't know what dy dx is. Plus two times y, which is one. So two times dy dx. And solving for dy dx has just got a lot easier because I just have the one variable and a bunch of constants. So we have 6 minus, distribute that 2, minus 2, minus 6 dy dx plus 2 dy dx equals 0. Uh, 6 minus 2, you know what, I'm just going to pause this and I'll put the answer up here in just a second. And there is your answer. Uh, we have... Our slope of 1, the point was already known, and then I put it in point slope form, and I stop, and we are done.